If you've never experienced the hell that is infertility, I guarantee you, you know somebody who has. And I can remember praying each night for a phone call. The pit in your stomach when the phone had rang and the absolute agony when we heard the treatments hadn't worked. It took Gwen and I years, but we had access to fertility treatments. And when our daughter was born, we named her Hope. Hope, Gus, and Gwen, you are my entire world, and I love you. I'm letting you in on how we started a family because this is a big part about what this election is about. If that didn't tug at your heartstrings, you might be in the heartless cult of a deranged sociopath. Speaking of heartless cults led by a deranged sociopath, JD, could you quickly, in full context, remind us of your thoughts about children which have done nothing but bolster your political ambitions to high office? There's just these basic cadences of life that I think are really powerful and really, really valuable when you have kids in your life. And the fact that so many people, especially in America's leadership class, just don't have that in their lives, you know, I, I worry that it makes people more sociopathic and ultimately our whole country a little bit less uh, a, a less mentally stable. And of course, you talk about going on Twitter. Final point I'll make is you, you go on Twitter and almost always the people who are most deranged and most psychotic are people who don't have kids at home. Look, what I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I just wanted to ask that question and propose that maybe if we want a healthy ruling class in this country, we should invest more, we should vote more, we should support more people who actually have kids, because those are the people who ultimately have a more direct stake in the future of this country. Man. Other than the fact that Kamala's VP nominee, Tim Walz, has essentially cemented his image as America's ultimate dad, has J.D. Vance, since that interview aired, been informed that both Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg have kids? Now, I should note, you have two children. They were born before Pete gave that answer. Harris is also a, a stepmom to, to children as well. But what do you, what's your response to that? It's, I mean... You know, the, the really um, sad thing is he said that after Chastin and I had been through a fairly heartbreaking setback in our adoption journey. Uh, he couldn't have known that, but maybe that's why you shouldn't be talking about other people's children. And it's not about his kids or my kids or the vice president's family. Uh, it's about your family, people's families whose uh, well-being will depend on whether we go into a future led by somebody like Kamala Harris, who is focused on expanding uh, the, the prosperity, the freedom, uh, the, the well-being of our families. And by the way, especially if you have kids and you're worried about climate, choosing between uh, a party that, that has a plan on climate that creates jobs and a party that, that still calls it a hoax, even as we went through the hottest day in world history. Um, or do you want your children to grow up in a country defined by a return to the chaos and recrimination and cruelty that was the hallmark of the Trump era. So nuns and priests aside, do you agree that there are people who very much love this country and are invested in its future, but they also happen to be childless? Oh, of course I believe that, Trey. And if you look at the full context of what I said, it's very clear the Democrats have tried to take this thing out of context and blow it out of proportion, which is what they always do, Trey, because they don't have an agenda to run on themselves. And if you look at what the American people are most concerned about, Trey, it's not an out of context quip that I made three years ago. I think you will agree with me that, that direct offspring are not necessary to be fully invested in the future of this country. 
Of, of course not, Trey. I do think that being a parent actually has a profound effect on somebody's perspective, and we should honor and respect that. But there are a whole host of people who don't have children for a whole host of reasons, and they certainly are great people who can participate fully in the life of this country. And that's not what I said, Trey. If you look at what the left has done, they have radically taken this out of context and, in fact, aggressively lied about what I've said. What I do think is true, Trey, and this goes to the heart of what I was talking about three years ago in those comments, but it's going to be something I continue to talk about, is that the left has increasingly become explicitly anti-child and anti-family. They've encouraged young families not to, not to have children at all because of concerns over climate change. They've suggested that people who do have children are somehow being selfish, when I think being a parent is actually the most selfless thing that you can do, and again, really does transform your perspective. So this is not a criticism and was never a criticism, Trey, of everybody without children. That is a lie of the left. It is a criticism of the increasingly anti-parent and anti-child attitude of the left. Okay, okay. He said, she said, claiming things were taken out of context, but not addressing the absurd thing that was said in full context, whatever. How about the thing that actually counts? The thing that actually affects American lives? The laws of our land? Well, first of all, let's be clear. We're the ones trying to get the child tax credit expanded, and J.D. Vance couldn't be bothered to show up in the Senate and vote for it, and Republicans have blocked that from being expanded, or it would be the law of the land right now. So if you want to talk about promoting uh, children, uh, promoting family, put your money where your mouth is. Same with a lot of other policies, like... Uh, uh, I don't know, paid family leave, something that Tim Walz delivered in Minnesota, something that the Biden-Harris administration sought to deliver for the American people. Right now, Republicans are blocking it, uh, but uh, that's something that they could certainly change their tune on, but they haven't. Project 2025 is full of things that, in my opinion, are bad for families. And, and look, when you asked him and pressed him on whether my family was legitimate, uh, he said yes because I think he kind of felt shamed into it. Uh, but let's remember also that last time I checked, he doesn't even think I should legally be able to have a family. Now, if, if, you, really, if you really got his way in his anti-marriage equality views, I don't know if that means that he would want uh, me and my husband to be forcibly divorced and separated from our children, or if he'd be satisfied just to have us lose legal protections like the ability to do our taxes together or visit them in a hospital. I don't know exactly what his vision of us not having a family looks like, but I know that it's not pro-family for me. Pete Buttigieg, thank you so much for being here this morning and happy birthday to your twins. All right, look, maybe J.D. Vance had a small flub a couple years ago that made him one of the most unliked people in America and arguably one of the worst VP picks in U.S. presidential history. But at the very least, he's relatable. He connects with everyday Americans, right? Uh, the zoo has come to town. Thank you for letting us come in here. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sorry, man. Okay, yeah. she, 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 she doesn't want to be on film, guys, so just cut her out of anything. Appreciate that, man. Um, I'm Katie Vance. I'm running for vice president. Good to see you. Okay. Um, how long are you working? I've been here since uh, the beginning of July. Okay. But this year. Okay, good. How about you, sir? Uh, uh, almost two years. Okay, good. How much is everything? Yeah, it'll be a lot of glaze, tears, some sprinkle stuff, some of these cinnamon rolls, just whatever makes sense. How long has this place been around? About four years. About four years? Okay. How long have you been here? Uh, a little over six months. Okay, good.